Okay, everybody. So in our last lesson, we took a look at areas that's two-dimensional. In this screencast, we go three-dimensional. We look at volumes. So if I can go three-dimensional, uh, I'd like to demonstrate by example what the concept is. Let's talk about the sort of thing we're talking about. So um, four examples to do, two in this video, two in another one. The base of a solid is the region bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 4. Well, what's that region? That's, that's this region. Here's y equals x squared. Here's y equals 4. This is the base of the solid. Now, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Well, what does that mean? That means if I can draw this a little bit more three-dimensionally, we imagine that, that this is on some tabletop, right? This is on some tabletop like so. And then cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. That means if we slice perpendicular to the x-axis, what comes off of the table is a square. We make a slice and get a square. So we sort of imagine that each of these little slices is a Triscuit. You know, some squarish cracker and the the side of the cracker always goes from the red curve to the blue curve, but it comes up off the table. So the Triscuit loaf has a flat side on the table, and then how high up the Triscuit loaf comes off the table depends on how wide this is right here. Okay? We want to find the volume of the solid. So let's think about all the things that we know. Uh, what is the volume of a Triscuit? Well, the volume of a Triscuit is the area of a square times the thickness of a Triscuit. That's what volume is, right? Length times width times depth. So uh, side squared times thickness. Now, in this case, what is that? Well, the side of a Triscuit runs from the red curve down to the blue curve, right? That's the side of a Triscuit. It runs from the red curve to the blue curve. So the side of a Triscuit is 4 minus x squared, red curve minus blue curve. That side length gets squared itself. Then what's the thickness of a Triscuit? Well, the, tr the Triscuit's not very thick. It's as thick as this x distance right here. That's some change in x. And that's true if we're dealing with this Triscuit or this Triscuit or that Triscuit. It does not matter. 4 minus x, quantities, 4 minus x squared, quantity squared, times a thickness. 4 minus x squared, quantity squared, times a little thickness. So if we do that for all of the Triscuits all the way across, then the volume of the solid is an integral. From where to where? Well, from whatever this x value is to whatever this x value is. And we're going to use x values because that's an x whatever this x value is to whatever this x value is. Well, x squared equals 4 at negative 2 and 2, so that seems reasonable. 4 minus x squared squared is 4 minus x squared squared, and delta x becomes dx in an integration process. So, we have the integral from negative 2 to 2 of I passed algebra 2, right? So how do we find this? We take an antiderivative 
antiderivative term by term, term by term, term by term, substitute, substitute, and subtract. And if you do that, you get the very guessable number 512 over 50. It's very, very guessable. You, you probably had that down on your paper before we even started. So what's the process? We find the volume of a representative slice, run a Riemann sum, fundamental theorem of calculus, come up with an answer. I'll illustrate one more time with a slightly different question. Uh, the base of a solid is the region in the first quadrant bounded by x squared and 4. Uh, just for reminder's sake and because you may be taking notes. That's the re this is the base of the solid. Uh, this time we're going to take cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. Again, we place the base on a table, right? And we've got this region here. And we're going to slice perpendicular to the y-axis and get a triscuit. Perpendicular to the y-axis and get a triscuit. And we imagine this triscuit loaf uh, that's got a flat side on the table. And then triscuits come out from the table by some distance that's equal to this horizontal distance. So again, what's the volume of a triscuit? It is a side length squared times the thickness. Now the thickness is a teeny tiny change in y this time. So what's the side length? Well, this is y equals x squared. That's no use to me because we're going to do a dy integral. That's of use to me because this horizontal length is this x value minus this x value. This x value is the generic, and this x value is 0. So the side length is square root of y. Square root of y minus 0 is square root of y, and we square that. So... And that's true for this triscuit or this triscuit or any of the triscuits up and down the line. So we run a Riemann sum. As we have more and more triscuits and they get thinner and thinner and thinner, we take a limited infinity and that turns into an integral. From where to where? From the lowest y to the highest y. From the least y to the greatest y. Square root of y squared is just y. Delta y becomes dy. So what is this? We take an antiderivative, sub, sub, and subtract. Uh, 4 squared over 2 is 8, and we're done. What is important to follow here? The process. We figure out what the volume of a particular slice is. We recognize that that's the same all the way through the interval of integration. We run through the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we're done. Uh, the following two examples in the next video will all have, um, they'll have different shapes uh, to for cross sections, different shapes for cross sections. So you're going to want to focus again on the process and then not get thrown too much by the geometry. I'm glad to take questions from you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you when we gather.